Joining us now, New York Times opinion columnist David French and editor of The New Republic, Michael Tomaski. Good to have you both on board this hour. Thank you all so much for being with us. You know, uh, David, we, we, we talked about, um, we've been talking about it throughout the morning. I'm, I'm curious what your thought is about, uh, about Donald Trump's uh, rhetoric um, uh, and the generalizing of it, where he says, you know, he started by talking about the car industry, but then he said, that's going to be the least of it. And then he expands it and talks about for all America, that's going to be the least of it. Yeah, I think, you know, when he has these kind of comments that have one meaning that's really terrible, another meaning that's a little bit benign, and then when the media goes for the terrible interpretation without mentioning the benign, he capitalizes on that. And it creates a day-long, two-day-long distraction when the reality is he said many, many, many things that are unequivocally terrible, that have no benign interpretation to them. And yet here we are on another day, maybe two days, of talking about this one comment that could have gone either way, who knows, complete word salad. And so I yeah. would rather com concentrate on the things that he said that are just unequivocal. And one of them was well, in like, that, like, that package. Well, how, about, how, about, how about this? Uh, how about uh, what we've also been talking about today and some of our uh, Jewish friends that have been on have taken great offense to the fact that he said, uh, you can't be a good Jew if you don't support Donald Trump of the Republican Party. I mean, I know that probably hits very close to home for you and your family, but because, of course, your your faith in God has been questioned because you don't blindly fall behind Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, this idea that there are good Jews or bad Jews based on how they vote. I mean, there's that itself is an anti-Semitic trope here. Um, it's absurd. And so the bottom line is we have a guy running for president who has said and done. It's not just said anymore. You know, in 2016, it was he said all these things. By 2020, it's he's done all these things. By 2024, we even know more about what he's done. And so that record is just overwhelming that continually he will say and do things that are make him completely unfit for the presidency. So, Michael, let's take Trump at his word for a moment and say yeah. he was talking about the automotive industry. Let's say he was talking about economics, uh, economics. But isn't what he proposes, the tariffs and the like, wouldn't that be devastating, too? Of course it would, Jonathan. And that's part of what I went into in the column that I wrote about this this week. Uh, OK, take him at his word. What's an economic bloodbath? An economic bloodbath comes from a 100% tariff on Chinese imports, to which we know China is only going to retaliate, and it's going to hurt American consumers terribly, and it's going to hurt American workers. I cited in my piece a study from the U.S.-China Business Council, you know, that well-known outpost of Marxist vermin, uh, and uh, they did a study in 2021 that said Trump's tariff policies toward China had cost the United States 250,000 jobs. Uh, I also point out in my piece that if you compare auto industry employment, auto and parts manufacturing uh, in uh, the Trump administration versus the Biden administration, and even if you take the pandemic out of it and cut Trump that huge break, OK, of removing the pandemic, uh, the Biden administration, uh, about 125,000 jobs have been created, 127,000 in those categories, and the Trump administration, about 28,000. So even putting aside the malign interpretation, which mm -hmm. I don't believe we ought to put aside, uh, he's just really wrong. All right.